Hey Hope Seekers, I hope you guys have been enjoying the mini series this week called Master Your Money. Hi, I'm back. My name is Amanda Winchester and I am tuning in live to you from Sherwood Park, Alberta. Let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from. Say hi as you're logging on. And today, guys, we're going to be talking about building your credit. Okay, now this is going to be in two different uh, kind of aspects of it. One, if you've never had credit before, we're going to be talking about how to go from zero to credit. And if you already have had credit and you kind of had some oopses along the way, we're going to be talking about how you can rebuild that. So I have my glasses on. I see I've got a reflection. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can see me properly. But we're just going to dive into it, guys. And this is kind of one of those things that, you know, a lot of people stress over. So try not to stress over it because I'm going to close out uh, tonight's video with kind of like a conclusion statement um, to kind of give you guys... Uh, you know, kind of like not a way out, but <laughs> a little bit more ease of mind. So just know that, you know, it's okay if you are really working on building that credit um, number up. Uh, it does have its purpose. We're going to be talking about that. But it also, it doesn't define you. It doesn't define your life. It doesn't define your family. So just just know that, okay? So to give you guys, give yourself kind of a, a breather knowing that this does not define you, but that this is a very beneficial tool to you especially if you are looking for any types of loans or credit cards or things like that or lines of credit um, mortgages car payments and whatnot so guys first of all let's talk about what building credit actually means that means a build your ability to pay back money that you've already borrowed so think of it not like your um, your regular utilities and things like that this is something that you've actually borrowed um, and so you're looking those are the things that you can utilize to be able to build your credit um, the other thing thing that that is is it proves your ability to manage money and you know like maybe when you were younger your parents gave you um you know an allowance and they're you know and maybe you were doing tasks for that maybe you weren't because i know it's different in, in different people's homes however that allowance kind of gave you the ability to prove to your parents like hey you know um you know i'm going to be smart with my money you know and teach me all the things and so Hey Sarah, it's kind of like the same thing with um, when you're building your credit. If a, a lender or creditor, as whatever you want to refer to them as, have given you that um, money to kind of build your rapport, show what you are capable of and how you're going to manage that. That's the whole kind of purpose of um, the credit score and how that works, just to kind of give you a, an insight on that. So first, guys, before we talk about how to rebuild your credit, we're going to be talking about how to go from zero to credit, okay? For those of you who are are new um, even myself included this in, in involved me as well because for so many years I didn't have credit like I would go to apply for something you know just kind of off the cuff and they'd be like uh, you don't even have a credit score so you know like <laughs> who are you so if you're like that don't don't dismay you are not alone um, but I'm gonna teach you guys tonight right now how to uh, build that credit up from zero to nothing or from nothing to a credit um, and maybe this is if you are a student as well but it happens to all of us at any age so it doesn't matter and it's nothing to be um, dismayed about we're gonna be talking about that again I said at the end there to kind of give you guys kind of a peace of mind and I don't want you guys stressing over your credit score but to get it from zero up guys first the first tip is to go and request to get a secured credit card now with a secured credit card um, I want to encourage you to only charge what you can afford to pay off within the month this is very important um, the reason for this is because again you're proving yourself proving that you uh, are able to and responsible enough to get that money use the money and then pay it off quickly now another tip when paying it off if you pay it off before the interest actually applies not only are you not having to pay back that interest but it also shows that you are paying it um, at a much faster rate now you don't want to do it like instantly like go buy something and then instantly pay it off with the cash because you're not giving it a chance to kind of show up and show that you are you know borrowing and then paying it off but maybe you know just wait towards the end of the month or whatever the time is in the month hey Shalina whatever the time of the month it is that you um, normally requires you to pay your payment just make sure you're paying it before the interest and you can check with your creditor um, if there is there's very few uh, creditors out there that will ding you for this but you can certainly check into that but that is another kind of side kind of nugget fairy tip as you want to call it um, to be able to get uh, that paid off quickly and as well as to avoid that interest rate the other thing is to make sure 
sure that you're paying on time, of course, every month. And also don't apply for multiple credit cards. I know sometimes it can be tempting, especially when you're trying to, whether you're trying to rebuild credit or maybe there's like a big purchase that you really, really want um, and you may not be able to get the full balance from one creditor and you want to, you know, kind of compound the credit, um, <laughs> you know, at, at your fingertips, but I highly encourage you not to do that because every time they run your credit for um, personal loans, lines of credit, credit cards, any of that kind of stuff, that is putting a, kind of like a ding, it pings your credit and it will actually reduce your credit score. The same thing is if you're constantly asking for your creditors to check your credit score, that's another kind of ping, so you want to avoid that as well. Now the other thing in addition to getting that secure credit card when you're building your credit up um, is after a year you can apply for a non on secure um, credit card. So if you have been consistently borrowing, paying back before the end of the month, you haven't been by, um, overspending, you know, you're not leaving a negative balance on there that you are owing and you are paying on time all the time, then this will build up usually within a six month period, but after a year is really kind of like the ideal uh, benchmark to kind of go, go for as your goal. And then after the year, then you can apply for that non-secure. And what that does is it means that it's just a full and free and clear amount. Now this doesn't mean go and run wild and kind of go off the cuff and you know stray from uh, this whole kind of payment processing plan. However, it does give you a little bit more leeway as well as it can of course increase the balance. Hey Virginia, sorry I had to pop off your uh, video. I'm looking forward to you guys. If you didn't are not already following Virginia, she was doing a really, she's always doing amazing stuff, but tonight she was doing a really great series. <laughs> I had to jump off to come on here because I kept playing with my time tonight. Family, you know, sometimes you just have to move the uh, date or the um, time up a little bit when it comes to your family but so that was me tonight so right now like I said we're talking about this building your credit from zero to um, a number so the next thing is if you are not going for a secure credit card you could also apply for a credit builder loan and it's kind of self-explanatory with a credit builder loan you it's kind of like um, forced savings so if you're having trouble saving money think of it kind of like that but at the same time it's building your credit as well at the same time so you don't actually get access to the money and some people think of that like when they go to apply for the loan and then they get approved hey Joanna you go to apply for the loan and then you get approved and you're like what I don't even I can't even like tangibly use this money but you can't the whole point of a credit building loan is to be able to get um, show kind of like again that um, ability to manage your money so they say okay we'll approve you we'll say for a thousand dollars but now you need to be kind of forced into saving that thousand dollars into this loaner account and once you have ac accumulated the set amount that you guys have agreed to for this loan then they automatically allow you to have access to that funds and then it becomes um, an amount that you can then you know repay um, and utilize as you going forward so it's kind of like it's similar to a uh, non-secure or a secure credit card however it's a little bit different because it's called a loan instead of a credit card and it's just built differently <laughs> so it's just kind of self-explanatory there the other option guys is when you're building your credit you could opt to have a co-signer now with a co-signer option um, what this does is it allows you to kind of apply for a non-secure credit card now the non-secure credit card means that you don't have to upfront give an amount of money that is part of the process with a secure credit card you have to like say base it for 300 or 500 dollars I really wish I didn't have that uh, <laughs> glow on my eye but anyway sorry guys um, for the non or for the co-signer you can also uh, it builds security for the lender so um, it gives the lender that knowledge of knowing okay well if they are not quite ready for credit yet but this person is willing to back them then okay I'm gonna say yes and then in doing so I'm going to trust that the person knows what they're doing by co-signing and that the person say you is going to be responsible with that money and then as you're paying that off they have um, that builds your credit but it also gives the lender the uh, stability to know that if you defaulted then they can go after your um, co-signer which of course you don't want that to happen but it does you know in some cases unfortunately it, ha it does happen to some people 
The other thing is you could look into getting an author, becoming an authorized user on someone else's card. So for instance, if you have a parent um, and they already have a card that's established or a spouse that's already established credit and they have a credit card, they can put you as an authorized user on the card. Now this doesn't mean that you are making the payments. However, being an authorized user is kind of a cool, uh, unique way to build your credit because you have the ability to utilize the money that's on that credit card. However, uh, and of course you want to be paying it off too, but your payments don't matter. Just the payments overall on that account count like um, matter to the creditor. And so by you being kind of uh, in on that as an authorized user, you're kind of guilt, you know, not guilty by association, but positive by association. So as they are paying, and of course you'd be paying them, um, then it just overall builds everybody's credit underneath of that little umbrella, which is really cool. The other option is you could look into a rent reporting service. Now for rent reporting services, it could be things like um, companies like Rental Karma or Rental Track or Rent Track, sorry. And what that does is you can request for these companies to um, track your rental payments that you're making online. The benefit of doing this is it creates a history of payments. So if you don't already have a credit card or a line of credit, then this is another way to kind of show your creditors that you are managing your money, that you're capable of making payments on time. And those rental payments can be extremely high. Like for instance, guys, for us, our home that we had for the last two years before we went off on our summer adventure journey, um, and then decide to take a, a kind of a more <laughs> um, economic, I guess, priced home. Uh, we were actually paying $2,700 for rent in Alberta. Alberta's rent is known to be higher because um, wages are higher. And of course, you know, it just kind of works itself out. But to some people, even here, $2,700 is a steep amount. So imagine accumulating those payments and showing that up on your credit score that you are making that type of payment. And then when it comes time for you to actually, if you needed to go for a, a line of credit or a loan or anything like that, then you are showing you're able to show that history now the only uh, issue with that is that it's not always recognized by every type of creditor um, so you kind of have to check into that uh, and you know kind of hope for the best I guess but overall from for most uh, creditors and lenders they will take that into an account because it does build up rapport and showing your payment history now the other thing is you can check your credit score and report through um, and this one is still in regards to building your credit from zero to um, what the amount that you want it to be is checking your credit score and report through things like Credit Karma or Nerd Wallet, depending on where you are. And then with those credit scores, they usually include tips on how to create um, and build your credit. So that's something that will work whether you have, you already have to have, excuse me, something on that credit, but using, <laughs> I'm losing my words, using that um, secure credit card, for instance, that you've already been accumulating and you've already been paying on, for instance, for six months to a year, now you're already gonna be showing up in the credit and building that credit score and building that credit report. And so from there, they're gonna give you tips. I wish I had brought water. Sorry guys, I talk too much. <laughs> I get talking and then I get dry. So now guys, we've talked about how to build credit from zero to the creation that you want. Now this goes up to, I think that the, I should have looked into it, but for instance, but the normal, like the good rate is usually around like 800 and up is kind of like an ideal number. But again, don't get hung up on the number. It's just a number. <laughs> the next thing guys though, that we're gonna be talking about is rebuilding credit for yourself. So if you've already had credit and kind of had some issues along the way, then this these tips are gonna help you rebuilding that credit. Hey Ron. The one of the main tips for that is keeping your balances low on your credit cards, okay? So think of it like this, if you have borrowed money already on your, you know, at this point in your um, credit journey, you're gonna be already on like a non-secure credit card. So these are not for people that are just starting out. This is somebody that's already established credit but has had some issues along the way. You want to keep those balances or pay those balances down on your credit cards. The higher your balance is on the credit card, the worse it appears on your credit report and rating. So by paying them off more quickly, then you are rebuilding that credit score higher because they're showing that you're putting all this money towards your debts and then it's building that score up and showing that your payments are more consistent. The other thing you wanna do is reduce your line of credit or credit cards to less than 75% of your limit. The purpose for this is because the 75% um, 
excuse me, I don't know where my thing went. But the 75% uh, is what reports as negatively on your uh, report. Um, but if you have it ideally between uh, below 50% is the kind of like the ideal mark to be able to have uh, it start reporting properly and more benefitly beneficially <laughs> on your report. Sorry guys, I think I should have gone uh, <laughs> gone live earlier. I can't seem to speak to this evening. Um, let me just check my notes here because I'm trying to figure out where I left off here. Sorry, just bear with me for one second. Yeah, I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. So the next thing is you want to try to remove things from your collections from your report. So if you've already paid off those debts, you can contact your collection agency and ask them to remove it from your credit report. This is important because sometimes, uh, you know, it kind of hangs around on there and it's really not necessary to do that. Sometimes they just kind of simply forget. Some people kind of drag their feet, I think, on purpose, but I didn't say that out loud. And so it's important to kind of keep an eye on that report um, to ensure that those things are falling off as you're paying them. So these could be things like parking tickets, tickets, um, your utilities, if you've gotten behind in like a cable bill or your power bill, things like that. After you've paid them off, sometimes they just kind of hang around on there and it looks negative to have them on there, even though they will show paid. So you can just contact the creditor and request that they remove that from your credit report. It's kind of request, um, referred to, sorry, as collection notations. So if you just want to kind of want the term, technical term, um, <coughs> excuse me. The other thing is you want to remove your old and negative debts. So if you have things that have been hanging around there for a while that have that you haven't paid off, they still are supposed to drop off. Ideally, of course, you want to be paying off these debts, but sometimes you just things happen that you're unable to do that. After six to seven years, they're supposed to automatically drop off. However, again, the reporting agency sometimes forgets to take them off. So you do have the option to contact them and it is your right to do that, to request that they remove them um, and just kind of let them, you know, remind them that it's still kind of hanging around there and you know it's time to time to clear the slate uh, the other thing is uh, I want you to encourage you to acknowledge it's not just about looking at you know what you can do to rebuild it but sometimes it's all well it's equally not sometimes it is equally important to think about what kind of got you to this place in the first place so kind of acknowledging if you have a credit issue or what the issue was understanding how did this, this happen was it because you lost a job did you have a separation or a divorce was it an injury or an illness that it caused you to miss time from work that you were unable to make the payments you know was it because you actually are making poor choices you're overspending you know thinking going kind of beyond your means you know these are things to take into account the reason why this is important Important is because it will kind of help you determine whether or not this is a chronic issue such as an overspending issue or if it's because you've just had something happen because life happens and so that's where I want to kind of go into um, the importance again reiterating the fact of creating that plan that budget making sure that that's in place the reason for that is even if you have a huge amount of debt. It's important that even still, guys, I, I stressed this a couple of days ago, that you're still putting money into a savings because of the fact that emergencies happen. So if you have an exuberant amount of debt and you're making the payments on time and everything seems copacetic, even though you have that kind of weighing on you, and then all of a sudden, God forbid, you know, you get really sick and then, you know, you're unable to work or you lose a job like I explained to you guys a couple weeks ago that you know I went into my job one day and after being there for like four months and completing my project they were just like oh by the way we've absolved your position and you know we're not hiring again for you so we just don't need you anymore we don't need that position anymore and pulled the rug from it from underneath me you know yes I got a severance pay and stuff like that but it happens guys and so if you don't have an emergency fund in place for those types of things then unfortunately it can really lead to some serious things things and what happens is and not only that but like I said earlier that it affects your health um, but then you start you know scrambling if you don't have that emergency fund emergency savings fund to turn to what happens then you're looking for borrowing money from somebody friend or family and if that's not going to happen then you're going to turn to like a line of credit loan or credit card things like that to start trying to pay off those debtors that are kind of knocking down your door now and then you're deeper deeper in debt and it just keeps you know bringing and bringing you further and further down so that's why it's really important so if you don't have a savings please 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 go start those savings right now <laughs> I know it's late but go start those savings so then you can get out of that kind of um, needing to re rely on that 
how do you, <laughs> excuse me, how do you deal with your debts? So again, we are talking about paying down the balances. If you already have the credit cards and you want to start rebuilding that credit, then it's really important to start bringing that balance down below the 75% um, line of what your credit is. Ideally though, again, of course, that 50% is the best number. That is where it's most um, recognized as a, as a positive number in your credit report. Catching up on late payments. Now that is one thing that can also assist with rebuilding your credit. The faster you catch up, then the better <laughs> the better it is for you. Um, this, what happens is when you start getting below, behind in payments, you know how you start getting those phone calls, and then they can put those negative um, remarks on notations on your credit report. But when you start making those payments again and getting caught up really, especially the quicker that you do it, then those will be immediately basically immediately removed from your credit report. It's not like a long-term debt that you have gone to collections. These are just kind of letting the creditors know like, hey, they're behind in payments. And then once you get caught up, then it gets removed much quickly, much quicker than if you are like something that goes to a collection agency and then you have to try to pay off that debt. And then, you know, it's the whole other skew of things. What happens though, is if you are late on your payments and you're like, but I can't, I really don't have the money to do it and I don't want it to go to collections, okay? So then at that point, you can call your creditors and make arrangements, find out what you can do. Can you defer payments for a couple of months? If they say, okay, this does not negatively affect your credit, it's just kind of like they put it into like a sleeping cell and sometimes they'll do that up to three months. So to kind of get you, allow you to get some money accumulating. Of course, you don't want to max that out if you have money in the meantime then again the faster you pay that off the better it's going to be and of course that's building a rapport with your creditor as well so if something happened again down the road then they're not going to be hesitant to be able to give you that option again should you need to tap into it if you talk to them and they're like yeah no that's not happening maybe you've already tapped into it um, too many times or maybe you defaulted after tapping into it because the money just didn't come in at when you thought that it was going to be and now they're saying yeah sorry but that option is not available to you then what you can do is then call like a nonprofit credit counseling to help you work out an arrangement they will contact your creditors on your behalf and just having that middleman really does make a difference in cases like that um, and they it's very rare for them to say no because now they they know that you're kind of in the hands of somebody else and they will have um, they think that that creditor or credit agency is going to start um, kind of helping you which is what they do they help you find the funds and find payment arrangements and payment methods that work for you and your current situation the next thing is a lot of people ask okay if I'm at this point, should I go into bankruptcy? Bankruptcy, I want you to think of as a very, very last resort. I know some financial advisors will say, okay, well, you know, just go out and, um, <laughs> you know, go bankrupt because it clears everything. Well, the thing is, guys, hey, Rebecca, the thing with bankruptcy is, is that it builds your credit really slowly. And on top of that, it may not actually deal with all your debts. Not everybody will, not all creditors will allow the debts to be covered by that, unfortunately. And a lot of people don't realize that. That's why it's really important to speak to a credit counselor of some sort in your area that you feel and you've met and trust. Um, and you can look for recommendations online. You can ask for recommendations. Even on Facebook now has that option, which is really fantastic. Um, and utilize those types of tools because those tools are there to help you um, be able to know that the decision that you are entrusting with somebody is is somebody that you can actually trust and rely on to help you get through that lastly guys after we've talked about building your credit from zero up to the number that you're hoping for as well as rebuilding credit if you've already made some poor choices the conclusion that I wanted to leave you guys with tonight is just remember that your credit report is just a number okay just take a breath with me Ha! <laughs> it's just a number, guys. It doesn't define you. It does not define your family. It does not define your life, okay? If you absolutely need to apply for credit for something, then fine. Let's make some, you know, strategize and make a plan in place, put a plan in place for you to start building that credit up um, or rebuilding it, whatever the case is. However, it doesn't define you. Do what's best for your family and your situation. I wanted to really impress that against you guys, with you guys tonight. 
Some people go to really great lengths to improve or maintain their credit score, but sometimes you just have to do things that are not ideal and sometimes that means that it's going to hurt your credit in the in the short run and it just hurts for a little while. However, just in the long run and overall, I just encourage you instead of just focusing on that number, stressing about it, which will just add to your stress, um, sometimes it's just better to kind of, you know, deal with it as responsibly as possible and just know that having an, a good situation, good credit situation overall from any point of view is the best ideal situation. And so that credit, core, credit score card does not define you. And I just wanted to, you to just kind of take your focus off that credit number, it's just a number, and just encourage you guys tonight to just really focus on um, building, you know, getting the debts paid off as easily and, and as best as possible for your family. And when you need that extra help, know that you have people like me to turn to to help you get through that as well as any credit counselor in your area or financial advisor. Um, and we're, that's what they're here. That's what we're here to help you with and know that you don't have to stress about this and that there is always a way out. It may not always be the right route, but it's always going to be the right route for you at that time. Time, and that's the important thing. So thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Please drop in the comments what the biggest aha for you was tonight. If you've missed the beginning of the video, I encourage you to re-watch from the start. If you know of somebody that could benefit from this, please feel free to share it. Or we're going to be continuing on with the series, and you'll see that in the uh, notations here in the description of the video where you can tune into the mini-series uh, event page, and you can invite your friends or family to that as well, or join us there if you're not already part of that. And thank you so much for tuning in. Tomorrow Tomorrow I'm going to be coming to you live from one at 1 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I look forward to talking to you more then and discussing more about how you can master your money. Take care, guys, and have a wonderful night.